at full forward. Rockcliffe, gee, that was strong by Rockcliffe. That is a terrific goal. Fantasia or Fantasia? Romy Arasio. Arasio Fantasia! I wonder how far we've got to go back to see when time on was allowed for a pig on the ground. All right, we're back. Rock the Razbar episode eight. I w- welcome my co-host, Arasio Fantasia. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Rock. I'm very excited about this week. Beautiful special guest. <laughs> yes, we do. I'll introduce him now, Jeremy Finlayson. Thank you for joining us. Uh, no worries. Thanks for having me. We'll uh, we'll jump straight into it. We'll get into the footy. We're pressed for time. What's happened? You've no petrol. <laughs> what? You're running late. Yeah, I'm running late. I apologise, but we're here now. No car at the moment. No car. No form of transport. If MG want to help the the great man out, maybe we can get something there. Okay, well, <laughs> th- there's a, a call to arms for MG to get involved. So last week we went down to the Cattery. We knew it was going to be a tough game. Didn't go the way we wanted it to. Not not disgraceful down there that they're obviously very hard to play against, but just didn't get the game on our terms. Yeah. Jess, yeah, you could probably touch on it more than more than me. Yeah, everyone in the footy world knows how tough it is to go down to Geelong. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to get the win down there, but... We stuck with them for the first three quarters and, yeah, we just couldn't get the job done in the end. But, um, yeah, there's things to work on and we'll take it into this week. Have you played down there before, Rock? Yeah, got a, three votes down there a couple of times, actually. Um, <laughs> you know what it's like, though. Yeah, it's skinny, isn't it? It's tough. You can't really get around them too, unless you go really quick. And Yeah, it's hard to go out and around. It's an easier ground to defend because it is a little bit narrower. But, um, yeah, they, they play that ground really well and we knew they were going to be fired up after a loss against St Kilda and... Um, a pretty good contest in it at half time, seven yep. points down midway through the third quarter and, and they were just too good in the end. So not our day down there. I want to talk about you. You were supposed yep. to you were selected to play Orazio, come into the team. Unfortunately Thursday little yeah. nick. Yeah, unfortunately I was um it's on my non kicking leg as well. A little bit tight in that quad and a little baby strain in there, nothing major. So hopefully it was just that, that week that I've missed and I should be right to go this week if I can get through some training. So get through training Magpies selection this yeah, week, potentially I think so. instead of AFL, because you were supposed to play AFL last week. I was, yep. Yeah. I think probably Magpies this week. Just it allows me to control, uh, you know, my minutes and and really just go in. And if I'm a little bit sore, then I can sort of just be a bit smarter rather than when you're at AFL level. You know, you can't really run out there, and if you're not 100, percent so absolutely, you uh, need to be 100 percent to perform at the highest level. And we've seen the Magpies go out to Loxton in the Russell Ebert tribute game, get the job done. And it was fitting that Xavier Dersma was best on ground wearing the number seven. Yeah, it was, he was superb. I think he had 29 and kicked two. And I think our whole midfield sort of started up. I think they were all nearly above 30. So I think it was one of those games they wanted to fill their boots. I don't know. Do you have those days, Rock, in the midfield? <laughs> every, every week. We'll get to that actually a little bit. Charlie got through. He got through his second game back. Yep. I think he's ready to return to AFL footy now. All going well this week on the track. I'd imagine he'd come in. Can we play four tools? Cheers. I don't know. I think it's going to be a bit tough like that. Um, but that was the chat that I had coming across the port um, that, that Charlie and Mitch and Toddy were going to be in front of me. But I've just got to keep putting my front for um, my foot f- forward and um, just keep, keep trying to perform. But yeah, Charlie's a big in if he comes in this week. I'm actually I'm pumped for him. Yeah, no, it's very good. And we the obviously take on the Essendon Bombers this week, the Orazio Fantasia Cup at four ten Adelaide yes. Oval on Sunday. We're currently one nil. We got them last year, so let's see if we can get them again. I think we, I think we can. We know that they've got their struggles at the moment yep. um, internally, uh, ex- externally. They're, they're being bashed around, so I don't think it's a, a game you can turn up and just roll over the top. It's going to be a hard fought game. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the way they play, Ben Rutten obviously coming from Richmond, they re- really want to play that contested footy and and get it forward and surge it forward as best they can. So you're going to be in the contest for as long as, as they can hold on to it. So it's not one of those games you're going to roll up and think you're going to kick eight, Jez, and, and roll away <laughs> with a win. It'd be nice, though. And the Magpies, are, of course, at Alberton on Saturday at one ten, taking on the Roosters. Do you know much about the Roosters, you two? I've played a little bit against uh, the Roosters. Beat them in a granny, actually, 2013. Yeah. You ever had 57 touches against them? <laughs> No, nah, I haven't even passed 20, I don't think. <laughs> well, I have. Yeah. I have, so uh, I can give you a few pointers if okay. either of you boys are down there, of course. Now, let's get into the guest, Jeremy Finlayson. You were drafted by the GWS Giants in 2014. Um, you spent a couple of years in the academy program. Almost there for 10 years, made your way at the end of last season down to South Australia. You requested a trade. You didn't care at the time which club it was. You just wanted to get back home, obviously a young family. Coming on board, you're a proud Indigenous man uh, that 
is obviously learning more and more about that as well as you go along your journey. So we'll delve into that a little bit more. We've we've heard your um, story last week, particularly around your, your wife or your partner Kelly, sorry, and and Sophia. So we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. But we'll start with some uh, fan questions. Some questions came through. <laughs> And we'll delve into uh, how the trade eventuated and, and whatnot. So I might get Orazio to fire the first <laughs> question away. Yeah, and I'm going to drop a bomb. So y- your partner Kelly's actually dropped a question. Oh, oh no. how do you feel batting above your average? <laughs> <laughs> I know you should do something like this. <laughs> nah, uh, like you said before, Rock. Um, just what we've gone through. Yeah, I am actually. She's a pretty pretty strong woman, and yeah, I'm just lucky to have her. But yeah. yeah so. I'll have to get get home and have a word with her. So. <laughs> well, I'll jump in the next one, and it's uh, from a current player. Dill Williams wants to know why you're so bad at basketball. Oh, no. Nah. I reckon he's up there with one of the worst at the club. <laughs> um, he's got his spot um, in the corner, but no, nah, anywhere else he, he, he's throwing bricks. But um, yeah. no, I'll have to, like, like I said before, have another word with him, but <laughs> just keep firing him away. I've seen you throw a few bricks, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I've got another one here from Mitch. Dot Tippett, what made you choose number 11? Is there something behind that? No, it's just, uh, I've always been, I think, 31, 47 at the yeah. Giants. And, um, yeah, I don't know, number 11 come up. And I think the player before me was, was pretty good. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Not no, pretty I, good. He's I a love superstar. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, nah, I love wearing number 11. It's, yep. it's just something different. And, yeah, I just love it. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll go next, and you're right, the number 11 previously was held by a very, very good player. Um, Sophie Healy, best bromance at the club? Uh, Sam Powell Pepper, I reckon. Um, yeah, as soon as I walked in day one, um, I was like, who do I reach out for? Um, like you said earlier, I tried to, for the trade, I tried to get to either up to Brisbane where my, my mum and dad live or down here where Kelly's from. Um, she's over in Port Lincoln. So um, when I got here, I didn't really know many blokes and I, I did it for my family and um sam Powell pepper reached out and um i remember he, probably the first couple of days i got here we actually had russell ebert's um funeral here on the at alberton and yeah just jumped in alongside him and ever since that that day um yeah and just stuck by him and yeah, he's pretty close to me so. beautiful we've got another one here from Lockie crocker any advice for a young developing key forward? He says he's 19 and plays centre half forward. He's trying to learn his craft, but he uh, he wants some tips. Have you got anything for him? Yeah, I actually didn't play forward till my sixth year, I think, at the Giants. Yeah, right. Fifth year. Uh, it took me a while. Uh, Leon Cameron threw me down back, and um, I just had to learn my way to defend and stuff down there, and I'm still learning that today. And um, yeah. I th- yeah, I think just keep chipping away because you never. You never are made football. You just got things to learn every single day, and um, I'll still have things to learn outside of footy when I'm done. So yep. I think just keep learning and enjoy footy as a tall forward. Thanks to all the fans for those questions. We'll move on because there's so much to get through, and we're pressed for time because yep. Arazio ran out of fuel on the way here. <laughs> uh, you talked about the process of ending up at Port Adelaide. You didn't mind where you went. You either wanted to go to Brisbane where your family was or down to Adelaide where Kelly's family was. Do you want to talk us through the process because... I think we can all um, yeah. elaborate a little bit on our journeys and how we ended up at Port Adelaide, but we'll get your story first, then maybe me and Arazi will come off the back of that. Yeah, I was I was a little bit nervous. Um, I still had two years to go at the Giants, um, and I knew we were going to have a little baby girl, and uh, we are stuck in the hub, and I said to Kel, geez, I need some family. Like, the Giants is a family club, because that's really all the boys have in yeah. Sydney. It's not a it's not a footy state, and... Um, I just yeah, I just threw it up to up to my manager, Dave Trotter, and um just said, Is there any chance I can get somewhere else? And I know I've got two years left at the Giants and um I didn't really want to leave there but I knew it was the best thing and geez, looking back at it now. Um I'm just super lucky that I got here to Port Adelaide and um I think it was a couple of weeks in, um, after the trade and that all went through, then yeah, the news coming out about my partner and then just looking back at it now, I was like, geez, if that trade didn't go through, then um, could have been a different story. But yeah, it's a pretty selfless thing to do. I think not many play, you know, players can be quite selfish in the game. So that's pretty huge, mate, from you. But what was that like? Did you have the chat to Leon and say, you know, this is what I want to do? Was, was there any pushback there? Because that can always be difficult. I know I struggled with that when I went through it myself. Oh, Leon and I think Jace McCartney, um, football managers, um, they were amazing. They 
just said yeah straight away yeah. search go go and have a look yeah. um like i said leon it's like ken hinkley here's family first and uh, yeah. i think that's what makes good football clubs and as soon as i walked in here it's it's the same as the giants it's just a big family club and um yeah and then my manager just did all the work behind the scenes and yeah i'm just really thankful that port la took me and i feel i can pay that back yeah yeah i think all our journeys were different i don't think it's the right time to talk about ours oh, mm-hmm. um jezza you got down here you said that it's hard enough moving to a new footy club uh, building new relationships i came here and i was in rehab but i found it really hard raz has probably gone through that a little bit but you said you were here brand new baby two three weeks later you find out your partner is diagnosed with cancer um do you want to talk us through yeah. how um you that you, when you hear that news initially I, I couldn't imagine it um but then what kelly went through and you went through as a family yeah um so i think it was a couple of weeks um into the move down here um or three three or four weeks um and it was post bub she was only probably like three months old um and yeah kelly just was having a few problems and i started joking about it and she started cracking at me so i was like let's go see the doctors and um took her in there to see a doctor and um yeah from that day on i walked in there and i knew it was different because the process of the patients coming out with COVID, and they brought me in i was like this is not this is not good and then um yeah the doctor just turned the bit of paper around and showed me and i I just nearly dropped sophia i was just yeah went completely numb you could just see this big tumor in there i was like jesus um so from that day, her mum come across, her mum quit her job, everything, three weeks into a new club. I remember actually walking around here, I think it was Ash, one of the physios, and I just broke down crying. Um, never met, met met the woman in my life and um, just started crying. I just I just felt weird. And um, and then she just started chemo on that and the doctor said, we'll try and cure you. And then they got the PET scan results back and they said, geez, it's going to be very, very hard. And then from that, that day and... Um, that's why I said earlier, um, she just hit it head on. They were, they nearly overdosed her on, on chemo on that. They were just trying to smash her. Like I never thought I'd be having this chat at 26 years old. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so she's done all the treatments and that. And, um, the doctor says, wow, it's, it's nearly all gone. So, um, I think on the 8th, 8th of, um, July, I think it is coming up. Um, she'll go in for surgery. I think we, um, this afternoon, actually, we got to go and see the see the surgeon on that but that's going to be another big thing um just what they're going to do to her it's just it's going to break my heart again and um yeah i just got to keep going um yeah i just don't even know how i've played eight games this year i said in the um in the paper the other day it's just yeah it's been a roller coaster but it shows your resilience i remember in pre-season you were training and then quickly rushing off and just doing everything you could so yeah. it's a credit to you and, and what you've done for your family I think not many boys could do what you've done. I don't, I don't think a lot of people in life would. And it's important that we touch on this because you never really know what a person's going through mm. unless you have the conversation. And for Jeremy to come to a new club and try and go out there and perform a training and then play with everything that was going on. I want to talk a little bit more because you've got the newborn baby and we know that bond between particularly mum and baby. But Kelly, she must be such a strong woman, woman because she wasn't able to hold her baby for periods of time or, or even see because of the yeah. COVID and, and the treatment around that. Like, Yeah, uh, she, she had to, straight away, she had to give up breastfeeding. And as, if you've talked to mothers before, that's the thing that, I don't know, connects them the most, I think. Um, and she had to give that up straight away. And, um, and even... Now, like after chemo, I'd say, "Do you want me to give her a bath?" And that, no, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm like, "All right then." Um, so she just wants hands on, and I think that's where the challenge is coming now. Um, surgery, she will be out for about three, four months. Um, so it's going to be a big one, but um, yeah, it's just massive. But and again, like we don't really want this to happen on anyone. But like you said before, it will come out last week. But the amount of people that have contacted me and given them hope, hope and strength, just. Yeah, it makes you proud that, you know, they hear our story, but we don't want to be saying it um, or going through it. But there might be someone out there that gives them a little bit more extra fight and, yeah, hopefully ends up like Kelly. But we're not out of the woods yet, but she's a strong woman. Mm -hmm. You go, mate. Yeah, a a trooper. So you can go as deep as you want here or you can tell me to shut up and and move on and piss off. But um, the surgery that's coming up, can you talk us through what that involves? Is, Is that the bowel 
part removed yeah. or full removed or, or what's yeah. the so diagnosis moving forward for Kelly? Yeah. So it's not the uh, ordinary bowel cancer. Like if it was, I think oh, Kelly's got the right terminology. It's um, it's like fifty percent in a rectum on in a colon. So yeah. it's like right on a wall. So if it was just three centimeters in her bowel, they would have just cut it out and started chemo. But they had like ten specialists. And no, like 50-50, they didn't know what to do because it was in such a bad spot. Mm. And um, Yeah, so she's got a uh, colostomy bag, I think, at the moment, and um, which is her large bowel, and then they'll just um, they'll, they'll do their thing. I don't know, surgeons are pretty special. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, she'll have a, like a smaller bag there, but, um, yes, yeah, that, that'll just be temporary. Um, but she's going to hit it head on, and I know that she's just going to come out the other end stronger. Uh, yeah than ever before and like i said it's going to be a big one but um i'll always be there for her it's, it's amazing that <coughs> it, it, when i was reading the story in the paper i knew a little bit i didn't know the the in depth but the news that you got when it was said that it's spreading like rapidly potentially yeah. to her lungs and, and everywhere like that just must have been devastating for you but kelly as well like how did you yeah. manage that yeah I, i've never read a pet scan but when he turned the the screen around sitting in the room i think that was the scariest thing is the scans and when i seen the scan and, I, and then they said the the cancer bits that they lit up and i was like geez all right she turned it around it was just it was practically all through her and then they said there was two spots on her lungs and then i just thought like when you think about someone that gets cancer you're like geez it's not good and then your worst thoughts are like will she die what, what's what's going to happen and then Still to this day, um, like I said, she's not out of the woods yet. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty scary that when when they turn that screen around and and then a couple of months later she got another PET scan and he goes, I couldn't even find where the tumor was. It's just oh, wow, well, thank God for that. But because um, there was another kid that gone through their surgeon and same process and everything, um, and his cancer ended up doubling. So you just look at them two, you look at them two stories, and you just like. Jeez, we've had all this bad luck. Like our house got tried to get broken into twice through it all, and it just nothing was going right for us. And then you look at some other stories, and you just you just wonder why. So life can be cruel sometimes. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Sophia. What's it like to be a dad? Obviously, that'd be a you know you can take yeah. your mind off things when you get home and and yeah. really just well, like I said, I don't like saying this stuff, but yeah. without her, we probably wouldn't have found it. The cancer. Um, so the doctors and surgeons think it's been in there for about three to four years. Oh, wow. So, um, and then when we had Bub, because of the hormones, it just took off. Yeah. Everything just started growing. And looking back at it now, um, without Bub, we probably wouldn't have found it. Uh, with Bub, we probably wouldn't get through this period. Yeah. So, oh, she's amazing. Um, she's nearly starting to walk and that. And I think that's what helped Kel get through too, just waking up to her and, yeah, it's, it's been a roller coaster, but yeah, yeah, she's a trooper. It's special, mate. That's special. And you just got a new the keys to new new yeah, house. New That's pad. exciting. I've, got, I've actually got paint on my hands, so <laughs> I'll go around there this Arvo and back yeah. into it. And you said you've told your story, and um, thanks again for you know, going in depth a, a little bit more with us. It's a really important story to tell, and you may help a lot of people along the way. And I think that's a really important message as well for for all the women out there that. Pregnancy does speed up this um, process of if you have cancer in there, it does speed the process up and, and um, grow rapidly. So it's an important message for all the women out there to, to make sure you're getting checks and men as well for, for different things. I, mm. I know that um, there's been a lot of tragedy over the, the last months, particularly in the sporting landscape of people losing their lives because of uh, not getting checkups and that. So it's a, a really important message. And thanks again for sharing that. And um, touch wood, hopefully Kelly um, gets through this surgery and onwards and upwards and, and the family can grow, mate. So yeah, um, lovely. thank you. really appreciate you going into that. Let's talk footy now and mm. um, wh how you found it coming down here because we know that you found yourself out of the team early on. Yep. Um, Kenny loves to drop the number 11, if yeah. you didn't know. <laughs> uh, you, you might be aware of that now, but... Um, you had a couple of battles early. We all know the reasons away from footy. How have you found Port Adelaide? Yeah, I've loved it. Um, since day one I walked in, I, I said it to a few people, I feel like I've been here for years already. It was only a couple of months. And, um, yeah, I've just got my hunger back. I kind of lost it a bit um, in Sydney. Um, yeah, just didn't know if I wanted to play footy or anything like that, as nearly every footballer does, how hard it is. And... Um, 
I just needed, like I said, fresh start, everything. I didn't think I'd have it because I had two years left on my contract with the Giants. And um, like I still watch every game at the Giants um, that they play now. But yeah, just a fresh start here. Um, just got my, yeah, my want back in that. And like even with Charlie coming back this week, like like you said before, would they play the, the four tools? I don't think that. But I'm just going to keep putting my front because like, anything can happen in footy. Yep. Mitch, Todd, someone, anyone can go down and, um, yeah, I'm just happy. Like I said, what's been what's been going on? I'm just happy to be playing footy, injury free. Um, and yeah, I just looking back, I just can't believe I played round one after what was going on. And uh, like I'm so proud of myself. Um, if I go out of the team, in the team, whatever, really, I'm um, just happy to be. Yeah. I think that's a really important message before you ask the next question. Yeah. It's footy's one part of life, but there's so much more to life than than football. And I think you're a great story of that. And um, sometimes we forget that as yeah. fans now, as a fan watching that, oh, they should be putting all their energy in in the footy. But there yeah. is so much more that's going on in everyone's world, and there's so much more away. People don't realise exactly yeah. that your people and what you've been through. So, but you're 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 really quite passionate about mentoring young Aboriginal people um in the game and uh, and boys especially in the in the aboriginal power cup that we've got coming up you're pretty keen to get involved in that yeah lucas said it the other day actually yeah. um yeah i'm keen to do it um, yep. just before covid hit i was going to do a uh, juvenile justice run my own 10-week program in jail oh, um no. get the footies in there and yeah because i think it's a i think it's a two-week turnaround from when aboriginal kids come out of juvenile in western sydney they go back straight back in because that's their it's their life really oh. um so, yeah, I wanted to do that, but COVID hit and um, I couldn't really do that. But, yep. yeah, I love getting involved with that stuff and trying to help people. So, yeah, I just can't wait. I, got, I only got told it a couple of days ago. So, yeah, any any way I can help because um, people help me get to where I am today yep. as a country kid, so I like to give it back a bit. And this year marks the 15th year the Santos Aboriginal Power Cup has run, which has seen over 5,000 students come through the program in that time which is really important now i want to talk about your yeah, aboriginal heritage and how you've connected with that and how that process has worked for you and, and you're learning yep. more and more all the time yeah i think that's where i've connected with sam power pepper actually um and um, mots and those boys jace um yeah I've, my sister actually rang me out probably oh, six months ago now probably a bit bit longer and um my dad it's my dad's site it's Aboriginal, um, and he only met his cousin. Well, let's say they're both fifty plus, and um, probably a year ago now. And he was part of the dad's cousin was part of the stolen generation. So my sister actually rang up crying and telling me how much information he had about it because I only I didn't have long with um, my nan, and I didn't meet my dad's dad. Um, so there was so much stuff to learn and dad didn't even know he existed and he only lived down the road. So yeah, there's so much stuff to learn um, about my, my culture and that. But yeah, I'm proud um, and to wear the Indigenous jumper that Lockie Jones um, design was yeah amazing and we get to wear it again this weekend and it's yeah, it's an amazing round. I think I watched every single game this weekend so <laughs> it was good, the start of it. So, And do you want to keep diving into more of that and learning more about that history and i mean i, I know carl aimon's big on that stuff and learning learning more are you, are you keen to, to get yeah. with those boys as yeah well? he's got so much to learn um yeah even elders they got they got still stuff to learn and yeah um yeah i actually can't wait to dive into it um, i message him every now and then and um he tells me things and um yeah i probably got to reach out more yeah. um so yeah now you recently found out you actually were related to Sir Doug Nichols. Yeah, right, right, and that's from my dad's cousin. Um, he told me that um, right, right down the family tree, and um, yeah, I think uh, Andrew Walker as well, and um, Warapunda over in um, Eagles. Um, so yeah, I've just like I said, I got to dive in more. He's, he actually jail hopped because he was stolen generation. So he was, I think he was one of thirteen. Um, Oh. and six of them were stolen um and yeah and he just that was his life just to jail hop and um just have a roof over his head so and then you get to my nan that um uh, i think she was one of 18 and 
Aboriginals back in the day weren't allowed in town. So she was actually born in a tent. That's coming from my dad's cousin as well. So um, just stuff like that you learn and you just like, it's pretty amazing how they got through. And um, yeah, I just love my background and yeah. That's great, mate. That's great. I've got a couple of fun questions here. You grew up playing a bunch of different sports when you were a kid. Lawn bowls. Lawn bowls, yeah. <laughs> talk, talk us through that. Yeah. How'd you get to the lawn bowls club and, and get out and you oh, know, bowl a few ends? Well, my town was only, I think it was a thousand people. Yeah. Um, and my dad used to go down on a Sunday to try and win a chook. So I just tried to go down there and take the chook off him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, I guess... I just played everything, seriously. Like, I yeah. played cricket in the morning, tennis, or I played cricket in the morning, cricket in the afternoon, or everything, really. I yeah. uh, played basketball in school, and, yeah, I just wanted to give lawn bowls a go, and, yeah, made Ravuna in the school and everything, and travelled around, went to Coffs Harbour and stuff for bowls, and <laughs> I think I had a really close mate that I played with, and we just did it for a bit of fun. Like, everyone yeah. thought it was an old man's game, and I just, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was... It was pretty fun, yeah. yeah. Was footy always your sport, though? Or did you did you know you wanted to play footy from a young age? or? No, not really. I just, like, I was a laid-back country kid. And, yeah. Um, I just went with the flow. And then, yeah, yeah. I got asked to be a scholarship for the Giants. And mm. I just took it with both hands. And now I'm still playing now. Yeah. So. Continuing on that theme, who's the best sledger at the footy club and that you've come across in your time playing? Oh, Shane Mumford. Um, <laughs> and Heath Shaw, really. Um, and... Oh, I don't know, really. Mitch, Butsy, there's a few of them. But <laughs> They're not intelligent enough, though, to be good sledges, no, those two. Uh, don't know. We're up forward, there's not really any of us that do it, so I don't really hear it. But when I was playing down back, I, at training that with Shaw, he, he gave a bit, so <laughs> he was one of the best. <laughs> no, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there and we'll jump into another segment, but we, we'll let you get going. But thank you again for coming on and sharing that story. It's a, a really important one. We covered so much and we could have an, another two hours. I'd love to spend more time <laughs> talking to you, but um, thanks for sharing that about Kelly and the family and, and also your Indigenous. And I think that's why the Indigenous rounds are really important to share these stories and, and get an understanding um, as a nation what what's transpired in the past, acknowledge it, but also learn from it and move on and, and continue to grow as one nation. So... Thank you very much again for, for coming on and uh, we wish you and Kelly and all the family all the best. Mate. Yeah. And if anyone wants to reach out to Kelly and that, don't don't be afraid. So just speak up, get in contact with the club and, and I can help you out and yep. help you out there. So all good. It's been an inspiration to everyone. Thank Even you. the boys here. So well done, mate. Thanks. Thanks. This place is different. It has a soul, a heartbeat. It gets into your senses. It's more than football. It's belonging. Well, welcome back. We uh, just finished with Jeremy Finlayson. What an inspiration he has been and Kelly as well, his partner, what they're going through. But uh, it's really, really good chat that was and um, hopefully it can help people out there as well if they, they want to get in touch. He was really open to have the conversation. Yeah, he was. And, but just how open and honest he was to, to tell his story. And like you mentioned, Rock, I, I don't think people understand what you're going through. You think you're just a footballer and, you know, I just kick goals and do what you do. But to be able to deal with what he's been dealing with and, and still perform, I think is, it's been incredible. Yeah, it really has. And um, we appreciate him for coming on to, to tell his story, but let's get into it now. Friday night footy brought to you by KFC. What a fantastic night it was last week. I actually don't remember doing that last segment after I had the, <laughs> the Mad Dog hot sauce there. I tipped Carlton by 15 points and yep. they went on to win by... Yeah, 15. You nailed it. 15 well done. points. So exactly disappointed that we couldn't put a couple of dollars on that and <laughs> we'd be all rich in here now but as you know we're not allowed to but um so let's get into you s you selected sydney to, uh this yeah this one's swim <laughs> by 10 and you, you were wrong so we know last week that i was in a world of hurt mm -hmm. where um i might before i get you to do the challenge because i couldn't really focus last week yeah. after i did it and i've got a hot pickle here for you oh, because we know that you cramp a fair bit, actually. So you know the benefits of having pickle, pickle juice. juice. Yep. Pickle juice. So before you go out there and train, I think it's important that you, you have a little bit of this. So I might get... Let's jump into the prediction this week. Friday night footy brought to you by KFC. Yep. Sydney take on Richmond at the SCG. 
I'm not sure if I can go Sydney again. I don't know. They've let me down. I thought they were coming home with a wet sail last week, but up against the Tigs at home, I think Sydney win, but just. I'm going to go Sydney again by 10. By 10 points. Yep. I'll go Sydney by 20. I think they'll uh, they'll get the job done. They need to bounce back after last week. Richmond are in good form as well, so it should be a really good game. Um, it's important that we touch on Lockie Jones's jumper that he mm. designed there as well. The, the boys will wear that again this weekend. Um as a part of Indigenous Round and all those, well, part of those proceeds from the sale of the merchandise, beanies, scarves, jumpers, hoodies, actually goes back to the Aboriginal programs run at, at Port Adelaide. So it's a, a great cause. It's great gear to not only wear, but also a part of that money goes back to, to really good programs run by the football club. So reach out um, online. You can either buy it or, or at the AFL store across here at Alberton, which uh, is starting to take shape. They've done mm. a redevelopment over there. So... Let's get into your challenge, the hot pickle. I think you maybe have a bit of a glass, a bit of a sip of the pickle juice, but then also you've got to eat half the pickle. I've got to sip the juice as well. I'll uh, just pour a bit of juice in here for you. You got that? Okay, that's plenty. That's plenty. Jesus, mate. And then there's the pickle in the middle, and I'm going to, oh. get, you to, I'm going to get you to eat half of that, all right? So. I hate pickles. That's like the, word, like the one thing I'd just... Like if I was to get a burger, I'd take the pickles out. Like I just can't. So you've... you've I want you to Done get this into this. Purpose. Yep. It's a hot pickle, hot and spicy flavour. Is it warm? Oh, that juice it's is warm. disgusting. It's fallen over there. He's just had a little sip. I need you to finish that cup because it's not much. And then also... I need, need to finish the cup as well. Yeah, I need you to finish that cup and then also eat half half that pickle. It's a big pickle. Not bad? Spicy or he's just swigging oh, it back at the moment? disgusting. Disgusting? Well, you won't cramp today at training, so that's the most important thing. As he throws back another one here, now he's going to get in this pickle. Is it hot or not? Just no, it's all right. Well, I'm hoping that the uh, the pickle's spicy. Jesus, half of that thing. <laughs> yes. Half of that pickle. Uh, if you're listening to this, it's it's quite large. That I'd thing's say huge. That doesn't probably, fit in the cup. Probably four or five inches long and quite thick. Very thick, actually. Uh, it's quite a big pickle. So if you're listening to it, make sure you get a bit of vision of how big this pickle is as he's going to put it down the hatch here. Can you see that? That is... I'm a bit nervous that it's not hot because it should be if the juice... I don't the know juice how was got... okay. It wasn't hot. Okay, here we go. Half the pickle down the hatch. I'm scared to eat it. Oh, crunchy. <laughs> he's having a bit of a chew. It doesn't seem to be that spicy or hot. Maybe I'll have to put a bit of uh, the mad dog sauce on it because I couldn't breathe for 15 minutes last week. I was in all sorts of trouble out there sweating and... The staff off camera thought that actually killed me at one point, but you're not experiencing any spice at, at all at the mm. moment. Can I put a bit of Mad Dog sauce on it? It's not hot at all. Well, it just tastes like a pickle. That's disappointing. I've been set up there because they, bought, want it, they it? bought it from the same store. Yeah, keep going. But I don't like pickle, but it's not even hot. <laughs> well, continue to eat it. It says hot and spicy flavour. So I've been stitched up again with the <laughs> challenge the other way. It's not spicy at all. So, oh, well, I, uh, I continue to get... Uh, stitched up down here at Port Adelaide. The uh, the staff behind the scenes keep just nailing me. You, you've had enough, mate. That's okay. It's, mm, it okay. hasn't worked as well as what last week did, but as he spits it out and it falls down on his pants. So that's the show this week. Thanks for joining us. Really important message from Jeremy Finlayson. What a great guest he was to have. As I said before, Essendon 4.10 on Sunday afternoon at Adelaide Oval. We'll take on, we'll take on Essendon there. And Saturday afternoon, the Magpies will play at Albert and we potenti- we'll potentially see Razio pull on the Magpies jumper. 57 touches, mate, if you could just get that done um, against the Roosters. I've done that. Potentially <laughs> Charlie Dixon play, but uh, if you want to get in contact with us also on the socials, YouTube, Instagram, yep. um, Facebook, Twitter, all those channels to, to get in touch and we'll try and get to your questions as best we can as well. But... Once again, thanks to KFC Friday Night Footy for bringing that and also Orazio MG Nita. Thank you, Rock.